the wonderful things you've done. As we go through your word, we ask that you speak to our hearts, you bless us, you will enrich us with your word, and that you will transform our lives for good in Jesus' name. Amen. Let you begin to glorify in our lives, O oh God, and let your heart stand. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So can someone um let's be precious about what we did last anybody want to join? Does anybody want to try just to remind us of what we um studied last week, the topic at least? Adoption. We did adoption. Adoption. And do you want to say one or two things about adoption? Don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Can someone help us out? Um, does anybody want to make a point about adoption? Anybody? When you adopted, um, when you are not um, adopted son, we spoke about representation. Yeah. Representing who you are. Yes, yes. Um, let me call someone. Yeah. Um, everybody is um, done. Um, Sister Toyin, okay. Do you want to help us? Adoption. Yes, sir. Um, adoption is um, when you've been welcomed to the family of God. Yeah, that. Um, so it's basically the the assurance of being God's daughter or son, whatever the case may be. So it brings about assurance and confirmation of being. A child of God. Okay. And um, what what um, leads to adoption? What is you know, the preceding step to adoption? Um, salvation and um, the salvation of our soul. Mm. Um, Christ being the one that has paid the price for us on the cross of Calvary. Mm -hmm. And then that's the confidence that we have that we are mm -hmm. children of God. Yes. And so when we've been, when we've given our life to Christ, mm -hmm. and when the Holy Spirit dwells in us, mm -hmm. and when we we are living a holy and sanctified life, that's mm -hmm. what gives us the the confidence that we are we are children of God. Mm -hmm. And that's the that's the basic for. You know the adoption into the family of God. Mm. Okay, fantastic. Well, thank you so much for that. So um, last week we looked at adoption, and um, today we'll be going a little bit deeper and looking at um, it, you know, looking at the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So as you can see, we've um, you know covered a few topics in the last uh, few months. Or, um, and um, it's my prayer that God would help us to really, uh, you know, apply these things to our lives. We started with repentance. We then went to forgiveness. We talked about being born again. Talked about assurance of salvation, justification, sanctification, adoption, and now we are looking at the baptism of the Holy Spirit. What does the baptism of the Holy Spirit mean, and what the relevance of the baptism of the Holy Spirit is in the life of a believer? So that's what we are looking at today. The baptism of the Holy Spirit. So we have our text um, in the book of Acts chapter 2 from verse 1, the book of Acts of the Apostles chapter 2 um, from verse 1, Acts of the Apostles chapter 2. I'm just going to bring it up so that we could all read together. It's a very popular passage of scripture um, and we would probably use, which version should we use? Maybe um, New King James? Is that okay? So we yeah. look at New King James Version, Acts chapter 2. And I will just uh, project that for all of us to see. And um, we will read that. Um, we'll just follow that together. Amen. So Acts chapter 2, verse 1. When the day of Pentecost had fully 
come. Amen. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all together with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And when the sound had occurred, the multitude came together and were confused, because every one heard them speak in his own language. Then they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Look, are not all these who speak Galileans? And how is it that we hear each in our own language in which we were born? Parthians and Medes and Elamites, those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya, adjoining Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them speaking in our tongues, the wonderful works of God. So they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, whatever could this mean? Others were mocking, saying they, they were full of wine. Verse 14, but Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, men of Judea and all those who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words, for these are not drunk as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel, that it shall come to pass in the last day, says God, that I will put my spirit upon all flesh, that your sons and your daughters will prophesy, and that your young men shall see visions, and that the old men shall dream dreams. And all my men servants and my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. They shall prophesy. Praise the Lord. This scripture is a very powerful scripture that, you know, captures what happens really at Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit. And if you just look through that scripture carefully, that the disciples on the day of Pentecost, they were gathered together in one accord. They were in one accord in one place. And as they were there together, praying and seeking God's face in one accord, in one place, the Bible says suddenly there was a sound from heaven, like the sound of a rushing mighty wind that filled the whole house where they were. And the Spirit of God fell upon them, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. Question, question, question. Who should I call now for this question? Who has the best, who has makeup on their face? Very good. Uh, is that Omo that I'm seeing in the corner? They are hiding from my camera. Uh, all right, who can we call on? Yeah, let's call on Duni. I can't see her face, but she's here. So, um, Duni, can you tell us, um, before the baptism of the Holy Spirit, before the Spirit of God filled the disciples, did the disciples have any dealings? Did the disciples have any connection? Did the disciples have any interaction with the Holy Spirit before they were baptized? That's the question for Duni. Are you there? Yep. All right. Um, I think the answer is no. Why? Because I need you need to be baptized so that the Holy Spirit can come upon you in you. Okay. It's a good trial. Um, let me call someone else. Maybe we've got the same opinion, a contrary opinion. Um, uh, um, sister, sister, sister Fumi. Sister Fumi, Abiola Ishawa. So, do you agree with what Dunia said? Yes, I do. I do because I remember in um, I think it's John fourteen twenty six or so that Jesus promised them that they should be of good cheer that they shouldn't worry that he was leaving that but he's going to send them a comforter someone that will that he will not leave them lonely but he's going to send them a comforter that they, he promised them the Holy Spirit basically 
So at the time, before, before the Pentecost, I don't think they had any dealing with him until Jesus promised and then he fulfilled the promise on the day of, of Pentecost. Okay. Um, does everybody agree with that? Any dissensions? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Sister Twain. I think um, the Holy Spirit has been around, but mm -hmm. the evidence only happened on this day um, when, on this day of Pentecost. Okay. It's been around, but the evidence happened on the day of Pentecost. It was, that's its full presence was manifested on the day of Pentecost. Fantastic. Now, um, Sister Lord, do you want to read the scripture for us? All right. I'm going to project it. Don't worry. When, when I project this, do you guys see, see, see the text when I project them? Yeah. No one is answering. Everybody's yeah. muted. Okay, I'm going to project the scripture. Let's see if everybody can see it. I'm going to project so many versions that, you know, whichever one you choose, actually. No, no, no let me do it this way. Um, uh, the book of John, chapter 20. And then we go for that. Praise the Lord. Are we together? So the question for those who are joining us, we're looking at the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And the question we're trying to answer is whether before the day of Pentecost, did the disciples have any dealings with the Holy Spirit? Did they have any interaction with the Holy Spirit before the Holy Spirit fell on them? So, where's Sister Law? Do you want to read from, this is John chapter 20, and I would like you to read from verse 21, all right, to verse 22, all right? Okay. Can you see that? Yeah. Verse yeah, 21 to verse 22, yeah. Yeah, 21. So Jesus said to them again, Peace to you, as the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. Now, my sister, you know, I wasn't just going to ask you to read a scripture. I was setting you up for a question. The question is, <laughs> what, how is this experience different from what happened on the day of Pentecost? Acts chapter 2. All right. How is this different? Something happened in John chapter 20. Jesus had died. He had resurrected. Before he had been taken up, he appeared to the disciples, he prayed for them, and he breathed on them. The way some men of God breathe on people, now they look. <laughs> so Jesus did that, you know. And the Bible says he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Are we together? Yeah. Now, in Acts chapter 2, they were together in one place, in one accord. And as they were together, the Spirit of God came like a sound of a mighty rushing wind upon them. And cloven tongues of fire was on their head, and they started speaking in tongues. How is that different? Um, I think it's different because um, when Jesus said receive the Holy Spirit, they, at that point in time, they, they um, were able to you know, speak in tongues, they were able to manifest because it was actually the Holy Spirit was actually with them all this while, but the full manifestation wasn't there at that time. But mm -hmm. at, when, at the time Jesus said, receive the uh, Holy Spirit, it was more like manifests all the Holy Spirit has, you know, deposited in you all, all this while that you probably, they were not aware. They were not aware of the power that he had in them. They were not aware of um, the, the gifts that the Holy Spirit had, you know, deposited in them but at that point in time they were able to you know manifest those gifts and start speaking in tongues beautiful all right any any other comment any comment any other comment um joshua um i believe what she is i agree with what she just said that the the is the presence of the Holy Ghost, but not until the day of Pentecost did the gift or the evidence of the Holy Ghost started manifesting. Mm -hmm. And wh why is that so? So what, what did you think happened to them when Jesus spoke to them? 
don't know, maybe it's as a result of their fate, or maybe um, at that point, their fate or their belief was not enough to allow the manifestation of the Holy Spirit before the day of Pentecost. Okay, praise the Lord. All right, so let's just um, quickly um, progress with this now. Um, before we go into the outline, the core um, uh, aspect of the outline now, the experience the disciples had um, at, in John chapter 20 is different from the experience they had in the book of Acts chapter 2. Are we together? Now, there's a difference between the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit and the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Okay? Now, what happened in Acts chapter 2 was an infilling of the Holy Spirit. What happened in Acts in John chapter 20 was the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit breathed on, on, onto them by the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, now what does that tell you? Now the Bible says that he that belongs to Christ has the Spirit of Christ, or he that does not belong to Christ, or, you know, he that does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. Every person who, has a, who is a child of God, who is born again, has the Holy Spirit in them. So if you're here, you're born again, whether you're baptized in the Holy Spirit or not, you have the indwelling presence of God in you. You're already a carrier of God. As simple as that prayer may be that you prayed when you gave your life to Jesus, the very moment you make that commitment to Jesus, what happens is that the Spirit of God dwells on the inside of you. Are we together? Now, I hope all of you are looking at me. Some people are doing some other things. Uh, some people, they are plating their ear. They are doing other things. But hopefully most of you are looking at me, okay? Now look at this. What is, can you see this? What is this? This is what? Somebody should talk. Somebody should it's talk. a cup. It's a, it's a yeah. cup, okay? Cup. It's a cup. Okay, yeah, thanks. Thank you, Samtayo, for registering your attendance. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right, so this is a glass cup, okay? It's an empty glass cup, all right? Now, imagine that this glass cup was full of, was full of dirt, okay? I put my glasses there. So what is this? This is a dirty glass cup. Mm -hmm. Mouse. Uh, now let me put this paper. This is not a good one. Are you going to serve, serve um, water in this glass cup? No. No. It's not ideal. Are we together? So at salvation, when you come to Jesus and you say, Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I repent of my sins, okay? You say, Lord, I repent of all my sins. You know what God does? The Lord takes away the sin. All right? That's what he does. The Lord takes away the sin out of you. He takes away all the sinful things, okay? Everything that was sinful, the Lord takes it away. Are we together? Then he what? He would wash you. He will wash you on the outside, which is salvation. He washes you on the outside. It's part of salvation. It doesn't stop there. What does it start doing? It starts washing you on the inside. Sanctification. Cleaning you so that you will become more like him. Exactly how he wants you to be. Are we together? He washes you on the outside. He washes you on the inside. Now, when you are saved, you have a measure. Are we together? You have a measure of the spirit. You have a measure of the spirit. You have an indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. But if I, if Joshua comes to my house and he's been to my house before, if I served him a cup of water and I filled it this much and I gave it to him, it will feel disrespected, isn't it? He may not say it, but then on Facebook, he may just like, ah, I went to a brother's house. Can you imagine? But he's very shy. He may not be able to tell me to my face, but I'm sure he will not be happy. Or will anybody be happy to be served this way? Probably not. So even though he has a measure of water there, what God wants to do for us is a lot more than that. And so in John chapter 20, Jesus breathed on them and they received the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 2, what happened? There was an infilling of the Holy Spirit. Oh, there was an infilling of the Holy Spirit. They were filled with the Holy Ghost. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. To the what? To the bring. To overflowing. They were filled with the Holy Spirit to overflowing. Now, this is Acts chapter 2. Do you get it? 
that I have to mop yeah. the floor. <laughs> As about <laughs> going to clean up the floor. <laughs> no, it's on my uh, it, well, it's on my deck, not inside the house. All right, praise the Lord. So that's exactly what happened. So let's go back to our outline. I, I hope you can get a picture of what I'm talking about. So you can already understand why the baptism of the Holy Spirit is really important in your life. You know, there are a lot of people who are satisfied with just half a quarter of the cup full. A lot of people are just satisfied with just a little bit. A lot of people are just satisfied with a little sip. You know, they go, you know, imagine going to a restaurant and just having a taste, a little sip. But God wants you to have a lot more. God wants you to have the feeling, the entire experience of it. Are we together? God wants you to have the fullness yeah. of the measure of it. That is what God wants for you. There are some people who will only like highlights. Do you know that? When they watch a game show, they only go to the end when they are voting someone out. Or when they watch a football match, they can't stay 90 minutes to watch a match. They want to watch the highlights. No, God wants you to have the full experience. That is what this is all about. So let's go back to our outlines very quickly and um, we'll explore this. We've read the text. We've got a memory verse, which is Joel chapter 2, verse 28. Can we read that together? It's on the display. One, two, go. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Joel chapter 2, verse 28. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And you are all flesh. I am all flesh. God wants to pour out all of his spirit on us so that we can operate in that dimension. The baptism of the Holy Spirit involves both the Holy Spirit and Jesus himself as the baptizer. Therefore, the baptism is preceded by total surrender and absolute commitment to Jesus. You can't be baptized with the Holy Spirit if you don't surrender to the Holy Spirit. For this cup to be filled to overflowing, this cup has to surrender itself to be cleaned. The Holy Spirit will not fill a dirty vessel. The Holy Spirit will not fill a dirty vessel. You know, at salvation, the outward, outside is clean. And if this was not a transparent cup, you wouldn't know that the inside is dirty. There are a lot of people who have, you know, the outward facade of cleanliness and maybe a little bit of cleanliness inside, but not enough. They still have a huge mass of self in them. They are born again, but they're still impatient. They are born again, but they still have anger. They are born again. They still struggle with lust. They are born again. They still rise and fall. They are not consistent. They are not broken. They are not selfless. They are not sanctified. And that's why sometimes the Holy Spirit cannot fully express himself in your life. And as I'm speaking to you today, I hope you'll be able to put, you'll put yourself, you know, in the you know, in the light of the word so that God's word can illuminate you. Because what I'm talking about, I'm not talking about, you know, someone else. I'm talking about you. I'm talking about you, brother, sister, who has given his life to Christ, but is not living to the full expression of what God has done. You're not living to the full, the maximum of the provision of Christ for you, the finished work of Christ. So if you don't surrender yourself, commit yourself totally to Jesus, how can he express himself in you? How can he feel you? The Holy Spirit will not argue with you. The Holy Spirit will not, will not force himself on you. If you don't surrender yourself completely to be washed and cleansed and purified and humbled, then you cannot experience this. Without this, he cannot baptize you. Jesus cannot baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In the case of water baptism, for example, the candidate undergoes total immersion in water. Or are we together? And in fact, the word baptism mm -hmm. means to immerse. And when you are immersed in something, you are overwhelmed with that thing. If you've been baptized in water before, you will be sub completely submerged in water. And while you are in that water, everything all around you is wet. You can't have, you know, baptism by immersion and still be dry. You know, and there are some of us who want to be baptized in Christ, but we want to have a little bit of the world. We call them world borderers. We like to stay at the border. Okay, we don't want to fully commit to Jesus. We want to still serve God, but still listen to a little bit of, um, you know, you know, worldly music and still do a little bit of, you know, singing. And we still want to we want to enjoy the world. We want to still go to Mardi Gras on Saturday and then we sing in the choir on Sunday. Not a beautiful day, though. If I catch you. All right. So, you know, we want to, you know, there, there are people like that with world borderers, not full commitment, not full commitment. When the latest artist from Nigeria comes, uh, is it, uh, what's this, this, this skinny guy, uh, you know, with brown hair, I can't forget his name, I've forgotten his name now. You know, you go there and you are singing and dancing, Ooh, <laughs> Monday, you lift up those things in the hands and you want to worship God, world borderer, how can the spirit of God fully manifest in you? 
are we together? Is it David Doe or whatever? You know, you still sing <laughs> quietly. Some of you, maybe I will enter your car one day, you would have forgotten that David Doe track is still playing. You start your car after service. You know, after a revival service is David Doe. And you want the Spirit of God, even if the Spirit of God is in you, when that song plays, it will come out of you. Without the Holy Spirit, without you submitting yourself fully to the Holy Spirit, you cannot, you cannot enjoy the fullness of what we're talking about. Amen. So when you are baptized and you are immersed, you are totally overwhelmed in that. When the candidate enters the river, he does not swim about or dive. He walks calmly, he, you know, he surrenders himself to the baptizer and is immersed. There's no struggle. You yield yourself. Somebody pushes you under into the water and you just surrender yourself. If the Spirit of God is going to baptize, if you're going to be filled with the Holy Spirit, and I'm, let me tell you, you don't need a special revival service to be filled with the Holy Ghost. When I was filled with the Holy Ghost, it was just myself and a, a brother. I wanted to be filled with the Holy Ghost, but I just didn't know how. I knew that there were other people who were, were getting filled, and I wanted Jesus. I wanted the Holy Spirit so badly. After service, we just sat, and he said, have you been filled with the Holy Ghost? I said, bro, I've not been filled. I've read all of Kenneth Hagin's books on baptism of the Holy Spirit, but I have not been filled with the Holy Spirit. And he held my hands and said, let us pray together. And as we prayed together, I was filled with the Holy Ghost. It wasn't in a revival service. It wasn't in a special. I didn't have to fast and pray for two weeks to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I had faith. I believed God. And I released and surrendered myself. And I assure you, if you are there under the sound of my voice watching me, and you surrender yourself totally today, genuinely in your heart, the Spirit of God can fall upon you. If the Spirit of God could fall upon Cornelius, Cornelius who was not even born again, Cornelius was a good man, he was a righteous man, he was doing good, but he never heard about Jesus until God spoke to Peter. And in, in that vision, that don't call anything unclean, go to his house and speak to him. And Peter responded. He went to Cornelius to speak to Cornelius. And I'm, I'm, te I'm telling you, the Bible says, while he was yet speaking, he wasn't even in a prayer meeting. He had not even started praying while he was yet speaking. And I'm trusting God today that there's some of you here that while we're yet speaking, as you are convicted in your heart and repenting of your sins and sanctifying your heart and yielding yourself to God, the Spirit of God can fall upon you. And you'll be filled with the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Amen. Look, look at a few outlines. Number one, who can be baptized? Number two, why do I need to be baptized? Number three, why must I speak in tongues? Number four, who speaks? Number five, what steps do I have to take? Now, I am very much tempted not to complete this in one week. Remember when we looked at sanctification, it took us three weeks. In fact, sanctification, we took one outline, one outline per week. Amen. So in, when, we, when we say digging deep, digging deep is not fast food. Some of us have a McDonald's approach to digging deep. All right? But yeah. Some of us have a what McDonald's approach to digging deep. No. We have to be, to be patient. You know, how many of you have had eaten lamb shanks recently? You know those lamb shanks? You put in the pressure cooker, you cook and cook and cook. Are we together? You don't rush it. Or there are some special type of beans that you cook. If you rush the beans, ah, it will be so hard. So you keep it there. Let it boil. Let it boil. When you put it in your mouth, it will melt. It will be like a taste of heaven. It will just be del delicious. And so I'm hoping that that is what God will do for us today. So we don't actually have to finish this. If we can't finish it, it's okay. But I want us to have quality time to pray. So when it's time to pray, I'll stop wherever we stop. We'll pray and we'll continue next time. Amen. Who can be baptized? Anyone who has been born again and sanctified can be baptized into the Holy Spirit. God does not discriminate. He is not a respecter of persons. Are we together? God is not a respecter of persons. Anyone who is born again, anyone who is born again and who has accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior can be filled with the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 2 verse 17. And it shall come to pass in the last day, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. No discrimination. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. God does not discriminate. And if we yield ourselves to him today, you will be filled with the Holy Ghost. 
if you have not been filled with the Spirit of God, you will be filled. And if you've been filled before, you will get another experience today in Jesus' name. You get a refill, a refill, being filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Some people think that being filled with the Holy Ghost is just a one-off experience. Do you know some people feel that way? They feel that, you know, once you're filled with the Holy Ghost, that's it. You know, you, know, you don't have to bother anymore. No, that's it. No. You know, being filled with the Holy Spirit should be a constant experience. Being filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'll quickly go on now to back to our outline. So who can be baptized? And I've said there, anyone who has accepted Jesus into their lives as the Lord and the Savior can be baptized. Number two, why do I need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit? Why do we need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit? There are several reasons why you need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Number one, power over sin. Galatians chapter 5 from verse 16. Galatians chapter 5 verse 16. The Holy Spirit empowers you to live a victorious Christian life. The question is that how can we live in victory, all right, when we don't have the Spirit of God living on the inside of us? It would be so hard, isn't it? How can we live a life of consistent victory over sin when the Spirit of God is not residing in us? Without the Spirit of God residing in us, it's just going to be very difficult for us to operate in that grace, for us to walk in the Spirit. And that's what he's saying there. Walk in the Spirit and you will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh, the desires of the flesh. Walk in the Spirit and you will not. Walk in the Spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Amen. Walk in the Spirit and you will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. When we are baptized in the Holy Spirit, we receive power over sin. We receive power over sin. What else do we receive? We receive power for service. Power for service. Can you see that there? Can you see that? I'll get somebody to read. Mrs. Amosu, can you read that for us? Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Can you see it on the screen? Yes, I can. Acts 1 verse 8, for you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You shall receive power when the Spirit has come upon you, yes. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Amen. Amen. Power to be witnesses. When you receive the Holy Spirit, you receive power power and that power when it comes in you into you you begin to witness we see that in the life of peter peter the same peter that denied jesus three times while jesus was alive and jesus told him that you will deny me oh no 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 i will not i would not no i would not but he denied jesus three times in one night that same man that's the Jesus he saw physically. The Jesus he saw. Remember Peter saw Jesus. Peter hugged Jesus. He held onto his leg. He lived with him. He was with him all the time. He saw miracles that Jesus did. Peter, remember Peter saw Jesus feed 5,000 people with what? Two fishes and five loaves of bread. Peter saw Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. He saw the prophets. He saw, you know, Moses and Isaiah. Peter saw, and Elijah, sorry. Peter saw all these great, wonderful things. He saw Jesus raise up that little girl. He saw Jesus call out Lazarus after four days. Yet, despite all of the miracles for three and a half years of seeing miracles, yet Peter denied Jesus three times. But that same man, Peter, when the power of God came upon him on the day of Pentecost, the same Peter that was shy, the same Peter that was timid, the same Peter that was unstable, the same Peter that was unreliable, that same man stood up and he preached on the day of Pentecost. And how many souls were saved? 3,000 souls were saved. The power of the Holy Spirit was more real to Jesus, I'm sorry, to Peter, than Jesus that Peter saw. I'm not sure whether you're getting that. Are you listening to me? Yes. The Holy Spirit that Peter did not see 
was more impactful and more real to Peter than the Jesus that he saw. Amen. When the power of God comes into your life, you receive empowerment. When the Spirit of God fills you, you receive empowerment to be able to witness Jesus and to be able to witness him with power, with authority. Amen. You are able to do that. So we keep going with our outline. What else? Why should you be baptized? Number one, power over sin. Number two, power for service. Power for service. Power for service. I'll bring up the outline again. Power for service. And number three, power to rebuke evil spirits. In Acts chapter 19, verse 13, we see that. Actually, any child of God can rebuke the devil anyway. This I shall follow them that believe in my name. In my name, you will cast out devils. But of course, when you are filled with the Holy Ghost, you get more authority, more power to be able to do that. So cast out devils. Question. Can a believer who is filled with the Holy Spirit be possessed by the devil? Now let me find somebody. Let me find somebody. Somebody that some of you that usually bind witches in beautiful gates. I'll find you. Find you. Who are those people? We we'll tell them to leave prayer. After half of their prayers of you know witchcraft. See all of them. Where is Bobby Odin? Where is he? Bobby Odin, open your face. Let's see. I know you don't bind witches too much, but let's hear it from you. All right. So my question is, can somebody be filled with the Holy Spirit and possessed of witchcraft? Um, uh, well, can, can, can somebody be filled with the Holy Spirit and... I just wanted to get the the the, the way you coined it, sir. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. I know. You see, let me tell you, your your brain. You are trying to look for the answer, so you are delaying delaying me. You want no, me to? No, 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 no. I, you, know, you know, I'm a scientist. <laughs> no, so no. If somebody asks you a question, you don't have an answer. You just say, "Can you repeat the question?" No, no, no. no and then no, while no. I'm repeating the question, your mind is like, ah, ah. ah, ah. <laughs> okay, let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. Yes, sir. Can a believer who is genuinely born again? Yes, sir filled with the Holy Spirit, can they be possessed of the devil? Let's say a young believer who just got born again, prayed, they came for a special meeting, they don't know a lot of doctrine, maybe like Cornelius. Cornelius did not know a lot of doctrine, was not well taught, he was just a good man. They give their life to Jesus and the power of God comes upon them and they are filled with the Holy Ghost. But then they tell you that last night, ah, say, bro, you don't please pray for me. Last night I slept. And we're just flying, flying, flying. Then they took us to a place. Ah, we ate your love rice with red, very red your love rice. I thought it was tomato, but it was blood. Okay, sir. Then I'll be flying. What would uh, you do to that person? Okay, okay, sir. The, 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 that, and, and that's the reason why I actually wanted to get the question clearly. Because when, when, when a person is filled with the Holy Ghost, I mean, the, the Spirit of God and and the possession of the enemy cannot cannot be in the same vessel at the same time based on my understanding and we're talking about the infilling someone that is filled if, if a cup like you have de demonstrated earlier so if a cup is filled there's no more room for any other any, any other so if 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 one if someone has the presence of the holy spirit within him but is not filled is not being consumed by the spirit of god then maybe it can manifest other spirits or other the manifestation of the of the works of the enemy can be evident in his life. But when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, I, I, I don't believe that you can be possessed by the enemy. Thank you so much. Shania, do you want to say something? Yes, sir. All right. Who else wants to say something? Um, all right, let me just move on from there because of time. Amen. Oh, your wife is, uh, Robbie, I don't put it on, please. I, I, I saw your wife just now. Does she want to comment? No, she's not commenting, is she? No. She's she's not commenting. No, 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 no. Now, the point that we should understand here, please, all of you in this church, please, when you have the Spirit of God on the inside of you, you cannot be possessed. And don't let anyone manipulate you because that's what the devil does. 
The devil can manipulate a believer. Are we together? The devil can manipulate a believer and can torment a believer. But the devil cannot possess a believer. You cannot be possessed of the Holy of an evil spirit. So for you know, and the people who fall into this trap are those that look for prayer contractors. Are we together? Because you know that in the world of prayer contractors, to, to break a course is cheaper than to cast out evil spirit. So, you know, if you come to my company now, if it's just to, to break a course, it's $2,000. If you are possessed, ah, possession, ah, as of a 5K starts, you know, that's a lot of money for prayer contractors, but they are charlatans and they deceive people. But we cannot be deceived because we are taught of God. Amen. We are taught of God and we're established in the scriptures. So we have power over evil spirits and we can rebuke evil spirits and they would go away. And that would be our portion in Jesus' name. The spirit of God is the seal of adoption that we have. The spirit of God is the assurance. It gives us the assurance that we are his own. We are children of God and we have nothing to fear. We have nothing to be worried about because the spirit of God resides on the inside of us. Amen. I'll quickly go to point number three in the interest of time. Why must I speak in tongues? Why must I speak in tongues when I'm baptized with the Holy Spirit? Question. Question. Must a believer speak in tongues when they're baptized with the Holy Spirit? Brother Samtaya, where is he? Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm here. What's the question? What's the question? Can a believer um should can a believer not um speak in tongues when they're baptized? Must must the believer speak in tongues? So a believer, you so a believer must speak in tongues when yeah, they're believer, baptized. Yes, yeah, it's an evidence. Okay. It's an evidence. Though there's a lot of um, I mean, I've heard people say um, you know um, you can have the spirit and not speak in tongues. You can be filled with the Holy Spirit and not speak in tongues. I think it was not important. It wouldn't have been um, recorded in the Bible and. Besides that, um, it was an evidence um, of the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Because the Bible did not even mention anything about that before. So when, when God breathed on um, the disciples then, um, there, was no, there was no evidence. And that's why it was indwelling. And now the infilling of the Holy Spirit, I think, um, should come with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Fantastic. Thank you, my brother. Um, where is, um, yeah, Sister Molade is here. I hope your husband is with you because he's the one I want to hear from, brother. Hello. All right. No, he's not here actually. Ah, okay. Yeah. All right. So you have to help him out, please. Okay. Can a believer be filled with the Holy Spirit without speaking in tongues? You know or that. Do you agree? Sometimes it says no. That's the evidence. Do you agree? This is usually a very controversial topic, to be honest. Uh, the Bible said clearly in Acts 1.8 that after the tongues of fire, you know, when they were filled with the Holy Spirit, they spoke because that was then seen as the manifestation of that Spirit coming upon them. Um, however, we have seen uh, in a lot of situations that yes, on the day where a lot of people received the power through the Holy Spirit, the speaking tongues were subsequently... Um, the, 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 it's either they lose a connection or they're not able to then manifest in tongues. But I believe, and this is my position on this, that once you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, one of the things it gives us is the fact that we have power, we are able to, cook, you know, um, we are able to speak the language of the Spirit. Mm. So for me, I would say yes, if you're baptized and you have the power and you still remain connected to the mm. source of that power, mm. you know, the Holy Spirit manifests through us. In speaking in tongues however you know these days when people say speaking in tongues it's sometimes rapping to be honest it's not you know the spirit giving them utterance <laughs> because speaking in tongues is actually the holy spirit giving utterance mm -hmm. it's not a self-led thing it's a spirit-led manifestation so if it's not spirit-led then it's just human beings rapping because they think you know the more i can rap in tongues then the more i can show how spiritual i am Thank you very much. That was very um, succinct. Um, 
now you you're correct now let but bro some tire where is some tire again let me ask him a question uh, i'll come to you bro Biodo. um is bro some tire around okay all right okay so um just listen okay i've unmuted your mic what do you think about this you go to a store to buy a motorcycle all right i know you've always loved a motorcycle let's say harley harley davidson whoa black one big harley you try it around test drive it you packed it all right and you came back home to meet your missus ah sorry uh, to meet your sister let me not say missus and then uh, she asked you where is the harley davidson it's not outside in the street but you showed her a receipt and anybody would ask you where's your harley davidson you showed them show them your receipt so my question is that do you really have a harley davidson bro i'm sorry to answer our question oh can you hear me yes can i can hear you now yeah i mean if there's no evidence then people would never believe you there's nothing to um show for um you know well, you have evidence now you have a receipt signed by harley davidson property limited eh, but where is the harley davidson you no know, that's the question i'm asking you that if you can provide the receipt do you oh, oh that, that, that it exists. Now, that is what i am talking about oh yes 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 now yes. speaking in tongues can, can, can i ask wait, wait, answer wait. that specific one so you have the legal title Yes. But you don't have possession. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> of yeah. the allegation. Mm, 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 mm. Now, and I'm just going to relate that to this. You know, speaking in terms is like a receipt. Are we together? If you genuinely have the Ali Davidson, you have the receipt. But there are some people who have receipt without Ali Davidson. Do you understand what I'm talking about? If you really have the Ali Davidson, and you buy it from a reputable dealer, supplier, Jesus, he will give you the receipt. Or somehow, some people also get receipts without having the power, without having the real substance. Now, and sometimes we tend to look at some of these anecdotal experiences to generalize and say, oh yeah, oh, <laughs> that one speaks in tongues, and that has that devil in her. Ah, uh, no, 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 forget that thing. No, we can't generalize the incompetence and the inadequacies of some people who make mistakes and bring shame to the gospel or to the experience. Are we together? The fact that somebody who is spirit-filled, who is even great men of God, fall and they make mistakes. Are we together? The fact that you are filled with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues does not mean that you are now Superman. It's not like, ha, ah, wow, I'm full of the Holy Ghost. Now I can go to the bank and ask for a million dollars. Forget it. You end up in jail. You know, it doesn't, no that's not what it's for so should a christian speak in tongues should a believer filled with the holy spirit speak in tongues absolutely and today is not a day of tongues because i know some of you are having questions about what kind of tongue you know there in Acts chapter 2 they say ah we're hearing your language you know no you know but while you're in church somebody's speaking in tongues and it's true sometimes you will hear them like this you ah, what kind of language is this one this one is not uh, this one cannot be a language like yeah, like even some of you will even record it and you go and put it on Google. Google translates. Google will say, ah, this one is a heavenly language. You know? So, you know, so maybe another day we'll talk about all kinds of tongues, the tongues of men, the tongues of and there are tongues of men and there are tongues of angels. Are we together? And all given by the spirit or trance. But what we're talking about here is that when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God will give you utterance. What does the utterance mean? You know, when I was a young believer, what I thought, I had the utterance, but I thought the Spirit of God would move my tongue. So, you know, you know, I remember there was a place I went to, they said, open your mouth. Just open your mouth, you know, and I was a very notorious guy. Then I would just open my eye like that, you know, say, receive the Spirit of God. And I opened my eyes and I'd be like, you know, let the Spirit of God move my tongue, but it wasn't happening. And I remember then in our church, we had this woman who was a very tough woman, it was in an Anglican church. This woman, very tough woman in the Sunday school, in the children's church. She was in her seventies, but she used to cane us and she used to curse as well. Yeah, you know, she would curse and she would cane. And somehow she was in the prayer band. So they told all of us that wanted to receive the Holy Spirit to come and so and so they say, our oh, prayer band people, go and lay hands. Ah, ah, I saw that woman. Anybody she puts her hands upon, they must follow. 
So I said, me, fall. Hmm. So she came. I stood my ground. I said, I'm not going to surrender. I stood my ground and she was pushing and she was pushing. She was pushing. She was pushing. You know, later, she pushed me with so much force that I fell. And when I fell, I just opened my eyes like this. I was looking around. I wasn't slain in the spirit at all. I was just looking at the people beside me. Some of the lady was shaking. I was like, if you don't, if you come near me, you know, that kind of thing. And you know, the people were doing all kinds of drama. They were rolling around and everything like that. I was like, is this it? Is this it? Is this it? So sometimes we think that the spirit of God will actually manipulate our bodies because of the drama we see. You see some people, they say, ah, they start to feel oil dripping from their hands. Or that the spirit of God, or they start seeing sweat, sweat, or feeling unusual, you know, sensations. No, not necessary. That's not necessary. The spirit of God will give you all trance. The spirit of God will drop words in your mind. And then you speak it out in faith. And those words will not make any sense to you. Those words will not make any sense to you, but you speak it out in faith. And I'll round up in this. We'll stop here so that we can pray. You know what? That my experience, when I spoke with that brother that day, he asked me a question. He quoted the scripture to me. That will his son ask his father for bread and the father give him a stone? Will he? Those of you who are parents here, you won't even do that to your parents. So he said, if you evil men, you evil men, know how to do good things for your children, how much more will your heavenly father give anyone who asks of the Holy Spirit? Are we together? So if you ask the Holy Spirit to come into you, ask Jesus, baptize me with the Spirit of God. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. He won't give you an evil spirit. And when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, He will give you utterance. And when you are filled with him, you may not feel anything. When I was filled with the Holy Ghost, I didn't feel hot. I didn't feel different. I was hungry. I went to my head there back. Real one. All right? I was hungry. I didn't feel, you don't have to feel anything. Because God doesn't deal at the level of our feelings. It's a spiritual experience. It's faith. It's faith that God, I open myself to you. Some people feel things. And I'm not saying that their feelings are not right. Some people get emotional, some people cry, some people roll on the ground, some people do different kinds of things. Later, we'll talk about that later. Maybe about why people fall under the anointing, why people roll around, why some people scream. You know, have you been to those kind of prayer meetings where they scream? You know, sometimes I tell them, shut up. Because they distract other people. Are we together? All right? But there, there are reasons why people do that. Not all of those things are sinful or crazy or, you know, devilish or demonic. Are we together? When we have another time, we'll talk about those of the operation of the Spirit of God in the, in, the, in, the, in the life of a believer. But for today, I want to leave you with these words. That if you are not baptized with the Holy Spirit, you are not living to the fullness of the provision that God has provided for you. You are like the son who has a million dollars in the bank account, but you are living from hand to mouth. You are waiting for a job seeker or job keeper or whatever they are calling it. But then you have a million dollars in your account and you are suffering. If you are here, you are not baptized with the Holy Spirit. That may be the reason why your spiritual life is inconsistent. That may be the reason why you still come fall and rise, fall and rise. That may be the reason why you are not able to commit yourself and serve God. That may be the reason why your service is ineffective. But if you come with faith, believing just as you are, and you open up your heart and surrender, and you say, Lord Jesus, I really need this thing. Jesus is the baptizer. If you come honest to say with him and say, Jesus, I am incapable. I want you to fill me. And if you've been filled before, maybe in these few minutes that we have, we cry to God and say, Lord, fill me again. Fill me afresh. Renew me. Like that cup, let the water, let it, let it, let it flow again. Maybe you're, you're becoming dry and your life is becoming a struggle. And I have faced that too many times where there's dryness and there's, it's, it's hard and it's a struggle. You know what I mean? You know when you, have, when you have wheels that are not well oiled and it's a grind. And you know it, it's a grind. But then he can release the spirit upon you again and fill you afresh. Are you ready to pray? Are you ready to pray? Now where you are, just pray. Close your eyes and just pray and connect with him and say, Spirit of God, fill me afresh again. Oh, I'm thirsty, Lord. I'm thirsty, Lord. I'm thirsty, Lord. For the living words, I'm thirsty, Lord. 
I'm thirsty, Lord. Yes, just pray, Lord, and say, Lord, I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty for the living waters. Feel me now, O God. Feel my cup and let me run over, O God. If there's sin in your life, if there's compromise in your life, why not say, Lord God, forgive my sins. Wash me, cleanse me by your blood. Make me clean. Make me worthy. Make me acceptable before you, O God. Wash my heart. Surrender your hand and say, Lord Jesus, cleanse me, sanctify me, and make me ready for you, O God. Like, you know, the inside, the, the inside of me, wash it, O God. The tendency towards sin, the tendency towards lust, the anger, the unforgiveness, the impatience, the sin, the, the, the self, the love of self. Purge it, purge me, cleanse me, purify me, O God. Make me worthy. Make me acceptable before you. Wash me internally. Wash me in and out. Cleanse me completely. Purify me. Wash me. Purge me. Let me be ready for your use, oh God. And fill me. Fill me today. Fill me with your spirit, oh God. Spirit of God, fall upon us and fill us afresh like you did on the day of Pentecost. The Bible says they were gathered together in one accord. And like the sound of a mighty rushing wind, you fell upon them, oh God like cloven tones, tongues of fire and they were filled with the spirit and they started to speak in tongues that we all know. Lord, we ask, oh God, in every location where we're connected right now, that the Spirit of God will fall afresh upon us right now, that there'll be a fresh falling, a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit, that Spirit of God you will fall afresh upon us in the name of Jesus. We want you to fall afresh upon us, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Fall upon us right now and feel us, oh God. Feel that child, feel that man, feel that woman, oh God. Fill us with your Spirit, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Let us be filled with again, again, and again, and again. Holy Spirit, come upon us. Holy Spirit, fill me, oh God. Fill me to our flowing, oh God. Fill me, Spirit of God. I yield myself. I yield my heart. I yield my mind. I yield everything to you, Spirit of God. Fill me, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Feel and flood my life right now. Spirit of God, I yield myself to you. I yield myself to you. I yield myself to you, Spirit of the living God. Fill my heart. Fill me, O oh God. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, fill me till I want to Fill my cup, fill it up, and make me whole. That God will fill us today in Jesus' name. Let's stretch our hands. And let's receive the feeling of the Holy Spirit right now. Wherever you are right now, we pray together in faith. And as we pray together in faith, we trust God right now that he will touch us. As we surrender our hearts to him, we'll receive a feeling of the Holy Spirit right now in Jesus' name. Lord God, we come before you together right now, Lord God, submitting and yielding ourselves to you, Father. We know that we need you. We need your power to be able to live above sin, above sickness, above circumstances of life, above failures, above anything that may be injuring us or limiting us. And so, Lord God, we just connect with you right now. And, and we pray that you will fill us afresh in Jesus' name. That every man and woman here in this church and even listening online right now, connecting with us, who is not filled with your spirit. Father, we pray right now, let them receive an infilling right now. And as they receive an infilling, I pray right now, Father, you give them the utterance. You give them the evidence, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, I pray that beyond the evidence, we want the real thing. We want the power. We want the power to be at work in us. Baptist, and you shall receive power. That's what you promised us. The most important thing, Lord God, is the power. The power to stand for you. The power to be witnesses for you. To be witnesses by our lifestyle. 
by our conduct, by our words, and even, oh God, by our attitudes. Lord, we pray right now that that power that would, will be imparted to every single person right now, connecting with me in Jesus' name. Lord God, we receive the power of the Holy Spirit. We walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. Our spiritual lives will not remain the same again. Our lives will not remain the same again. We walk in the reality of what you provided for us, oh God. We stand upon your word with faith, believing that when we call upon your name together in agreement, you will answer us. And as we have asked for your spirit, for the infilling of the Holy Spirit upon our lives today, we believe that you've done it. We believe you've given to us. We believe that we receive it, oh God. We believe that we receive the Holy Spirit. We receive him. We receive him right now. Every single person that received the Holy Spirit, receive the power of God, receive him right now. Let there be another feeling. Let there be another feeling right now. In the name of Jesus. And if you have been baptized before, start speaking in tongues. If you've not been baptized before, just release yourself, release your mind, release your mind, and believe that when you ask Him, He will give it to you. He will give it to you. You don't have to roll on the floor. You don't have to roll on the floor. You don't even have to feel anything. Just open up your heart and believe Him that He will not give you a demon. He will not fill you with a demon. If He gives you an utterance, speak it out right now and start speaking right now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, because we receive from you, God. Thank you, Father, because you are the baptizer, not man. You are the baptizer. You will baptize us. You will fill us. You will fill us so that we are flowing in the name of Jesus. Upon every single man and woman here, let there be a fresh feeling, a fresh fire, a fresh release of your power in the name of Jesus. We receive it. I receive it. We walk in it, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We believe you, God, for everything. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. It is done in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Amen. We will continue with this teaching next week by the grace of God. Um, we will continue with it again. And hopefully we can talk more about speaking in tongues. And we can talk about now. I have time to ask questions. I know some of you have questions you want to ask. We'll be able to ask those questions. Feel free to contact me one on one if you have any questions before then or anything you want to talk about this um, about this topic. Feel free to reach out to me. Please let's not forget on Sunday we're having a wonderful service. It's a Thanksgiving service. You know the theme of the service? Regardless, regardless, it's going to be a powerful Thanksgiving service. Um, by God's grace, it's going to be impactful and life transforming service. So please connect with us on Sunday. Uh, for the workers, we're meeting at 9.30. Bro, Joshua, you're a worker at 9.30. 9.30. Workers meeting, 9.30. And then after that, we have our kids' service and our um, adult service at 10. It's going to be a powerful one, Thanksgiving. God bless you all in Jesus' mighty name. Let's share the grace together. The, the grace, grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. The love of God and the fellowship and the of the Holy, Holy, Holy Spirit be with us now and for the Holy Goodness, Holy Goodness, and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Sister Shion Fumi, welcome. Welcome. Yeah, no, go and change the name of your account from iPhone to Shion Fumi. <laughs> nah, I've been, I've been there are two iPhones here. I don't know who is who. Uh, and then when I've we answer, you want to use my credits to be saying hello to everybody. I just thought of my video now. There's another iPhone there. Who is this iPhone? iPhone. Oh. You have plenty of iPhone. There are two iPhones here. The other iPhone should There's talk. more than two. Oh. All right. Maybe it's um maybe it's somebody who will know. All right. Um, Mr. and Mrs. iPhone, we bless you. Thank you. God bless you for joining us. Who is here? Who else is here? Brother no, Pastor, God right bless back. you. Um, uh, sister, um, sister, Lady Sachs. Lady Sachs. Yes, yeah, so speak. Ah, you are there. I, I thought you are still in this place. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'll show your face. Uh, who is this? Who is this? 300574. Is that your account number? <laughs> <laughs> uh, who is that? Where is? Where have they gone? This is the Stokumbo, sir. So, uh, bro, 
Why did you put your account number as your <laughs> your <friend number? laughs> You should be putting your name. Let's be able to identify you. Amazing. Listen, this is Bible study. You don't have to have you don't have to be explain like that. You know, Hello, Tori. Hello. Hello. And yeah, okay, well, God bless you in Jesus' name. Yeah. 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 God bless you. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.